So again, we, we talked about the OHL season a little bit here. I know you don't follow it, follow it a lot. Um, you, you are a hockey person. You follow hockey, though, is the NOJHL. They are having a season. They played Blind River first. Then they played Espanola. And if we ever get out of this lockout or shutdown, they're playing Rayside. They play four to six games within the 10-day period, two-week period. If you can play a team four to six times in 10 days, why can't you just alternate, in my opinion, first alternate within those three teams so you're not playing like a playoff playoff uh, of thing? Do you think do you think that's hindering and causing too much rivalry? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. To be honest, I knew you were going to go there, and I've been thinking about that quite a bit today. I I love rivalry building, especially in the NOJHL. I think that that's huge. I really do. I think that that's what makes it exciting to watch. Um, a prime example is, you know, when the Sioux Thunderbirds, you know, do I go to all the Thunderbird games? Not necessarily. I think I've gone to, I think I go to every Sioux Thunderbird Sioux Eagle game, you know, especially the ones across the river. Those games are it's just sorry, amazing. It's because you can have a beer. That's why. Yeah, yeah at the polar. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. That helps. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I think it's amazing. Like I do, like I, I love those rivalries and, um, one thing, one thing, you know, that I do think that needs to be said is uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention um, the Blind River Beavers and the job that uh, Kyle Brick's doing out there. Um, you know, I was looking at some stats today, and uh, you know, they have four players in the top thirty in scoring, right? And in comparison to that, the Great or the Sioux Thunderbirds have one. You know, now I do think that there's a reason for that too, which we could talk about as well. But I do think that, uh, you know, I do think that the Blind River Beavers deserve a heck of a lot of credit. And I'm actually excited to watch them play. I mean, uh, they got some, some great players on that team. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm excited to see them. And it's nice to see a town, you know, it's nice to see a city like Blind River really succeed and have success there because I know how much they love that organization and they love that team. So uh, good for them. It's nice to see. But I, I actually, when I did an interview with Kyle, I think after the first or second game, and I asked Kyle directly out, is they got, and it's not against his organization or his players, but young young coach, young uh, roster this year, smaller roster this year. If you were to bring the contact back in that we're not having during this modified COVID, would you see the four players at, at that high scoring? Yep. Good question. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard to tell, right? Uh, I do think that the no contact obviously helps the more the more skilled teams, but that's uh, you know that's a discussion for another day because, um, in my opinion, hockey isn't hockey without contact. It's a totally separate game, totally separate game. And I sh I'd actually be curious, you know, I uh, I'd be curious to see how the officials call it too, right? Because uh, from what I've heard through some meetings and some people I've spoke to. They're calling this no contact rule different all throughout the north. Sudbury is extremely strict on it, extremely strict. Whereas our officials here are a little bit more lenient on it. And both officials aren't wrong. It's just the way that they're interpreting the rule and seeing the rule, right? So I think that that's important. And that's exactly it. No, I'll use it as an example. Uh, over Christmas, I saw my brother. Um, I, again, have have four brothers, but but my one brother. Josh, um, people who do do know in the hockey, Josh is my brother, not my son, who people think some people do is, but he does. He's he's done more Blind River games this year than than Thunderbird games, and I asked him. He doesn't say a lot because, again, being a referee, he, he keeps it to the way it, where he's supposed to. But I said, modified hockey is it hard hard to call? And he said, "You're goddamn right." <laughs> And that's a prime example. Yeah. Even for the players, like I asked Danny Lambert and Jeremy Stevenson to coach, to coach it, and he goes, "It's totally different." So, yeah. I've been so I coach. Uh, I just coach midget um, midget B here in town, and and we're just doing the scrimmages, you know, scrimmage idea, and it's the same thing. I mean, I feel so bad for those officials. Those officials, you know, what do you call? You know, you could call a penalty every play. It's hockey. You're going to bump into people. You're going to, you know, contact is inevitable. It's going to happen. So um, I don't I don't envy the job of those officials at all. It's tough. But I go back the other way. I've been to, they say, two Espanola games, uh, two Blind River games. Um, the, only, the only problem I have, and I might, like say, take a little bit of heat from this from the NOJHL, um, but the thing is, is they're taking – 
and then I again asked my brother this, and he wouldn't have voiced his opinion on it. Is in my opinion, the goalies are getting a little bit too roughed up. They're getting liberties because right now, usually if you get kicked, you fight, and the before the last ten minutes, you get that game. Yeah. Usually after the last ten minutes, you get the next game. Yep. You fight right now with six game suspension. So really? I, I understand the extreme because of COVID. Yeah. But me as a, as a little bit more of the the rougher type of guy. I'm going to take liberties on the goalie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As, but as a coach, Denny Lambert, Jeremy Stevenson, Kyle Brick, um, how do you how do you deal with that in your opinion, coming from a coach's point of view, is to stop that because all you're going to get is a two minutes or you're going to get kicked out of the game for roughing somebody up? I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. I really am. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know what I would do. Answer it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would do. I mean, like I think about that all the time because I'm the same way, right? I'm – you know, stay off the goalie. If you touch the goalie, there's, there's, you know, there's hell to pay. But it is difficult. I don't know. It, it's hard because, you know, do you sacrifice, you know, because, you know, can you imagine, I mean, I haven't been to a game yet this year and, uh, and I wish I would because I can only imagine what the power plays and penalty kills are like with no contact. You know, it's almost like the power play would just have the puck all day long in the, in the, in the uh, offensive zone, because what, what can you do as a defensive player? And I'll use that as an example. And, and it was like watching the, the, the U.S. last night in the Canadian end. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Was, it was, they were just running around. And I'll be honest, I'm a Canadian all through and through. But even when Can U.S. was in the Ameri Canadian end last night, five on five, still looked like Canada was short. Yeah. No, so, I, but I, that's, I, what, that's what it's looking at the junior A level, right? But going back yeah. to junior A level, in South, Southwestern Ontario, they were playing into the lockdown and they were actually had to wear one of these under their oh. hockey eye tech masks. So could yeah. you imagine that? Yeah. Oh, trying to breathe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really do think that it's a good thing. People are playing sports in any capacity. I, I'm trying not to be critical. I, I, I'm trying not to be critical of the people who make the decisions because I do feel like, their hands are tied. I feel like they're tr they're trying to do what's best for the sport. But if anything happens, if there's an outbreak, if there's something, people are going to say, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? You know, it, it's a scary and a difficult situation to be in for those who are in power. At least I got to say, when you say in power, at least I wasn't in the Capitol building today. Unbelievable. <laughs> I know uh, we, we talk more sports, but I had to just—I just had to throw that in there when it yeah, came to yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah. I, there's lots I could say on that topic. That's, that's where we say the Canadian flag. And again, I, I love—I love the states. A lot of friends in the states, but thank God, like again, when it comes to control, there is no control today. No, uh, it was insane. I agree. Uh, maybe, um, maybe, maybe they're celebrating the gold medal. It's a good way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I don't know. It's it's scary. Once we're done here, I'm going back to watching uh, to watching it because uh, I'm I'm fascinated to see uh, where we're at now. So I don't know.